If you've ever manually tried to configure a computer's IP address, you've probably noticed that not only do you have to pick an IP address, you also have to pick something called the subnet mask. Now usually you don't really have to worry about that because it just automatically fills it in for you, but it's still quite useful to know what it is and how it works. So in order to understand a subnet mask, you first have to understand an IP address. So let's take a look at the IP address of the computer that I'm using right here. So its IP address is 192.168.1.17. Now that's a local IP address, so don't think that you're going to find that one on the internet. Now in this IP address, there is one part that identifies this device, so that is this computer and there is another part that identifies the network that it's in. The part of this IP address that identifies this device is the last bit, 17. The part of the IP address that identifies the network is in this case 192.168.1. So other devices in this network also have an IP address that start with 192.168.1 but then their last number is something else because that's the number that identifies the device. So you might say well pretty straightforward then the first three parts identify the network and the last bit the last part bit has a different meaning in the world of computers of course the last part then identifies the device. Pretty straightforward right? Well unfortunately not because that just happens to be the case in this configuration. Because how the IP address is divided, so what part of it identifies a device and what part of it identifies a network, is variable. And this is where the subnet mask comes in. So the subnet mask tells the system which part of the IP address is for the device and which part of it is for the network. So in my case, the subnet mask tells the devices in the network that only the last part is used for a device and the entire first part is being used for the network. So that's what a subnet mask is for. And in order to understand how it actually does that, we have to take a look at uh, an IP address in its binary form. So the way the computer sees it in a form of zeros and ones. So this is again my IP address, but this time in, in, uh, in binary, so it's just 32 zeros and ones in a row. And I've also left the dots in there so that you can kind of see how this goes. Feel free to pause the video and actually have a look at how these numbers are converted. Basically, every decimal number, so 192, 168, 1 and then 17, those are converted into four binary numbers. Now as we discussed, in this IP address, only the last number, so the last part of the address, only that represents the device. So in this case, that's the last eight bits of the address, the last byte of the address, that's what represents the device. And the first part of it is all the network identifier. So we use a subnet mask that looks like this. Okay, so it's a long string of ones followed by a little string of zeros. So it's 24 ones followed by eight zeros. So basically it is kind of like a mask that you put over the original IP address and it says look all these places where there is a one that part of the IP address is what we call the network identifier and the part where it's zeros that part of it identifies a device. And if you then take that subnet mask and you convert it into its decimal form then you get the good old 255, 255, 255, 0. Okay, so that's where that comes from. The reason the computer automatically fills this in is that if you use an IP address that starts with 192.168.1. something, uh, that kind of IP address is almost always used with this kind of subnet mask. So that's just kind of a default thing to do. But then, of course, other subnet masks are possible. So let's say you could have 255.255.0.0, which would look like this in its binary form. So now half of the IP address is used as a network identifier and the other half for devices. Or you could have 255.0.0.0, which means you only use the first part to identify the network 
and then all of the rest of the IP address to identify devices. So this is useful if for some reason you have loads and loads and loads of devices, but you don't really care about having many identifiers for networks. But that doesn't mean you have to pick one of these classes. Your subnet mask that you use could be something else. It could be something custom. You can split it somewhere else. So for example, you could pick a subnet mask that looks like this. So it starts with a one, and then it's just all zeros. So that would be 128.0.0.0. So in this case, you only have two network identifiers, right? One or zero, and all the rest of the address is purely used to identify devices. So that with this, with this subnet mask, you get the maximum number of devices on the network. Or you could have something like this, I don't know, where you use the first byte, the first part for the network, then you use two additional bits um, for the network as well, and then the rest of it for devices. So that would be uh, 255.192.0.0. Perfectly possible. So you can do custom subnet masks as well. Now, although you can do it, I wouldn't recommend using these custom uh, subnet masks. That has the following reason. Okay, let's say we have my computer again, 192.168.1.17. And then we have some other computer, which is on 192.168.2.35. Now, if I look at that, I can immediately tell that other computer is on a different network because it's got that 2 instead of a 1, so it's not in the same network. It's very quick and very intuitive to spot that. And the reason it's so quick to, to see that is because the split point for the device and the network identifier is exactly on one of these dots because we're using a, a default subnet mask. Whereas if we would be using a more, you know, kind of wacky subnet configuration where so let's say we use 255.255.255.192, for example, um, now that means that the, uh, the split point for network and device is actually somewhere in that last part. So now if we have a computer that has the IP address 192.168.1.150, that computer is actually in a different network than my computer. Even though if you just kind of look at these IP addresses, you would you would intuitively would you would say, well they're on the same network because they're both they both have that one. Like the first part of the IP address looks identical. While in reality, because we use this weird subnet mask, they are in fact in different networks and they cannot communicate with each other. And so in this case, you would have to write that down very carefully so that uh, you will remember and other people who might be working on the network will know as well, because otherwise things are going to get very confusing. One final thing you have to know about these is that they're sometimes written in another way. So people figured out, well, it's kind of a hassle to write down the entire subnet mask every time, you know, 255.255.255.0, it's a bit long. It, it also takes a lot of time to say. This video is probably five minutes longer because I said that every time. A quicker way of, of doing it is by just writing down the IP address followed by backward slash and then the number of bits that is used to identify the network. So for a 255.255.255.0 configuration, which again was this in binary, you would simply write the IP address followed by backward slash 24, which immediately tells you the first 24 bits are being used um, for the network identifier, and the, therefore the last eight bits are used for the device identifier without having to write down that entire subnet mask. It also makes things way less confusing for custom subnet masks because it's if you see 255.255.255.192, it's not immediately obvious um, to know that that's three full bytes plus two extra bits enabled. Right? So if you do this a lot, then it would be obvious. But to 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 a person who doesn't do this every day, it's not very intuitive to to see that straight away. Whereas if you just have backward slash 26, you can just, it, straight away, you can understand it's 26 bits for the network followed by the remaining uh, six bits for the device identifier. So it's easier to understand custom subnet masks with that notation as well. And that's why it's used quite a lot. 
anyway, hopefully this video made subnet masks a bit clearer. I hope you've enjoyed watching it, and of course, thank you for watching.